Pastor Greg Locke releases an audio that is gut-wrenching. It is the audio of bullets being released at his home one minute before he gets home. Now, I want to say thank God that him and his family are okay. I've been praying for them and their protection moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ. It is great to see that he's okay and still standing firm in his faith, right? I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy or anyone that is even a wicked or false prophet. I would not wish this upon anyone. If they went through this, no matter who they are, I would pray for them. And I do pray for a lot of people that I do videos on. I really do. But wickedness must be exposed, but that's a different conversation. But I want to play this video for you guys. I'm not going to stop it. Um, it's, it's fairly long. It's about nine minutes. All right. He begins to talk about everything he went through and how everything led up to the shooting or him finding out about the shooting coming home and whatnot. So, you know, let's take a listen to this. Um, I'm gonna go from there. It's been a wild week for sure. Uh, I've pretty much ignored uh, all of the uh, requests for interviews. I've not done any of those. They've kind of done their own stories. And I, I think maybe early in the week, I, I said that I would at least answer a few questions, but I'm not answerable to them. I'm answerable to him, amen? But I'm accountable to you as a church family in-house and online, all of our hubs. And so just very briefly want to just uh, let, let you know, uh, obviously, we're okay. Praise be to God for that. Amen. And so that's a, that's a blessing. But uh, I, I'm not talking about, you know, motivation or uh, targets, any of that kind of stuff. That, that doesn't make any difference. What, what does matter is God protects his children in supernatural ways. He certainly does that. We could have been having a very, very, very different conversation uh, this morning, if any conversation at all, for that matter. And so uh, we were we were doing some things actually for the museum in Pigeon Forge, and a man was uh, helping us not just curate some things, but uh, showing us you know how to set it up legally and all of that. And he was helping. And so we were coming back the next day. We were going to stay the night, and we decided that we would go ahead and, and come back. Uh, there's two things, men that you need in your life that will help you with great direction. Holy Spirit and a holy wife. And you better pay attention when they talk, especially when she talks on behalf of him already talking to her. She said, I just feel like we need to go home tonight. I'm like, all right, cool. So we decided to do a little one dinner shows with the kids and we got in the car and we came. We were two different vehicles and all the kids and big family and a little, little Tobias. Good morning, buddy. And uh, so we're heading back, and we got to about Cookville, and uh, Cookville, in fact. And I, I called my wife, and I said, hey, babe, I said, you don't have to stop if you don't want to. I said, I need to use a restroom. I got Malachi with me, and I said, I'm just going to I'm stop, and I'll, I'll catch up to you if you don't. She said, well, I'm not going to stop. She said, but I, I'm tired, and I feel like the Lord wants me to get over in the slow lane and just go a little slower. And I thought, well, that's crazy, because if you know our family, if you, you know, you waiting on us, you backing up, praise God. We eat dessert first. We do everything fast. So, and we had been going pretty good, clicking away, get, getting home up until that moment. So she kept on going. So about Alexandria, a little bit before, you know, right at Wilson County, I called up to her. And sure enough, she's just putzing around 60, 65 miles an hour. I'm like, holy smokes alive. What is this woman doing? And she said, the Lord just told me to slow down. And the Lord tells you to slow down, you better slow down. I don't care how strange it seems to anybody, and I don't care how much they honk at you, slow down, right? So we get back to campus, and she pulls up, and I stop down here to check the mail. And somebody had already got it and put it in the office, and so I'm checking the mail, and me and Malachi, so I, she rolls up in the driveway. It's, I roll up in the driveway, and I stopped, and I said, well, holy smoke, somebody has busted beer bottles at the end of our driveway. It looked like glass everywhere, just shimmering and glimmering in the moonlight. <laughs> And uh, so I jumped out and I thought, well, holy smokes alive. This ain't glass. It was spent shell casings. So at that point, I didn't know what had transpired so quickly and how, you know, severe of a situation it was. So I'm thinking, well, I'm just going to call the police and just report it because, you know, we've had dead chickens put in my driveway and, you know, we've had the vandalism of the, the pulpit and the platform and the various buildings and tents that we've been in. And, you know, we have people that show up here doing stupid stuff all the time. And so I thought, well, I'm just at least going to report it because it's kind of weird that somebody would just take a bunch of empty shell casings and dump them all at the end of my driveway. Maybe that's saying something. Well, I had no idea it was saying a lot. 
so I hopped in the car and I, I told Malachi, I said, I'm going to call him. I said, it's 1020. Boom, right there. I looked at the clock on the, in the car, 1020. So I pulled up and little did I know when I pulled up that a frenzy was going to be happening and people were going to be, you know, shouting in the house. And, and then all of a sudden I began to realize, oh, it went through the, you know, the, the, the wall and the uh, headboard and, and Destiny's room and, you know, riddled the truck up in the garage. And we're talking about from the bottom of the driveway all the way up through the back of the truck, the middle of the truck, out the front of the truck, through the garage door, all the way out the back of the garage into the fence at the very back of the property. So we're not talking about a, a daisy BB gun. And so when I began to realize that, I have all of them. If you've been to our house, you know we have a food pantry like right in the middle, right? It's like the perfect little storm shelter. You sit there and eat when a tornado comes by. And uh, so they're all in the, in the food pantry. And I'm running around the house like a madman with an AR in my hand and a 9 millimeter in my back pocket. Not knowing what's going on. And by the way, you can criticize that all you want to, but I'm here to tell you one day the government's not going to protect you and the police aren't going to show up in time and you better know how to protect your family. You hear me? And if me saying that as a pastor shocks you, you clearly are here as a visitor. I can promise you that. So they eventually showed up. It, it, it seems like an eternity. You know, when your wife's on the phone screaming at her to get here, get here. I mean, it really does seem like a long time. And, you know, the kids are hollering at me, don't go on the porch. You know, and I'm running around like a madman. And then they show up and they're like, put your hands in the air. I'm like, it's my house. So I put the AR down. And they said, turn around, put your hands up, walk backwards, get on your knees. And so I'm doing all that. And I'm like, I got one in my back pocket too. You might want to get that before I get down, you know. And so it was, it was a surreal moment. And... What was interesting is when they pulled up the security footage, because, you know, there's cameras all over the place. Uh, this camera right here on the guard shack, that's 50 yards from me in my driveway, whatever that is. It picked up the car that it, it ended up actually being a couple of cars that were involved, but the main car and the driver and the, the shooter. Which, by the way, can I say to the Twitter world, the camera will show you that it wasn't me standing at the end of my driveway putting my family in jeopardy, pulling the trigger. You people are stupid. And so what happened was when he jumps in the car and leaves, the security footage shows one minute later, my wife pulls into the driveway with the kids and the grandkids in the SUV. One minute after he sprayed the house and drove off. I came in a minute behind that because, as I said, I stopped down there and then I stopped down here. And so by the time I got in the house, there's a couple of minutes by the time they got in. And uh, we're not obviously allowed to, to share certain things uh, with the advancement of the investigation, although they're very good, by the way, at what they do. They're very good at what they do. Shockingly, surprisingly good, the things, the questions they ask, the things that they know even previous to this. And so uh, I just want to play you a, a, just a few, I want to show you how one minute of obedience can change your life forever. I, I played this the other night at DR's tent when I, when I talked about what was going on. That was the first place I went. I needed to go get fed a little bit. But I want, I want to play you this lest you think that this is just some small nonchalant situation. This is 10 o'clock at night, 10... 18, 17, at the end of my driveway, this is a sound that was picked up, by the way, 50 yards away. Okay? 50 yards away. <laughs> 60 rounds in less than three seconds. 60 of them. The detective said he'd never seen that many spent shell casings in a, in a drive-by shooting situation like this. So, that's the information that we know. They have far more information than we do. We have not been allowed to be back in our house uh, since then. And, uh, and other than packing stuff up, we're not going back anyhow. But they, they told us that they're, uh, they, they fear retaliation at this moment. Obviously, it's been so big in the news media. And they're only going to tell us and you so much. All we know is they're doing their job. But even if they don't, God's done his job. Amen? That's what I know. That's what I know. So, listen, just hearing those bullets just made my, my stomach like sink. 
you know? I'm glad he's not going back to that house. I don't know how long he's going to be away from his home. Hopefully he moves and steps away. And that's not operating fear, but that's operating in wisdom to protect your family, your children. Because obviously Greg Locke is not perfect. If y'all think I'm controversial, he, he, he takes it to another level. But he's still a child of God. He's still a man of God. God loves him, right? And there are many people praying for him, and he has impacted the lives of many, okay? There are many people that can think otherwise, but there are some Christians that, there are many Christians that believe that he is a man of God like myself, and they have been impacted in a positive light by him. Some people can say negative things. Some people say negative things about me. A lot of people do not like me, right? And y'all can see that in the comments and whatnot. But I'm going to tell you this, guys. At the end of the day, we can agree to disagree on a lot of things. We can disagree when it comes to doctrine. We can do all these things. But when things like this happen, pray for people. Put your guard down. Stop being a, a skeptic and just pray. Are we, are, we truly, are we truly Christians? Or are we just out here to take people down? I understand when it comes to doctrine and falsehood. I understand that. But when someone's life, not only their life, their entire family is threatened and they are saved just by a delay of one minute, forget about all that other stuff and pray. Because if you can do a reaction video about this, but not ever pray for him, it just reveals where your heart's at. You're just covering the content because you know it's trending views or you're trying to defend something, right? I think we truly got to be Christians and, and whatever denomination and whatever, we still got to pray for people, whether they're saved, warlocks, witches, false prophets, it doesn't matter. We don't have to publicize these prayers, but I, I, I assure you today, I'm praying. You don't know who I'm praying for, right? Do I agree with everything Greg says and does? Absolutely not. We're not going to agree with every single person with everything that they do. There are people that I'm cool with, that they're cool with me, and they're men and women of God, and they don't subscribe to everything I do. They don't agree with everything that I do. You feel me? Some of them in the past were sending subliminal messages towards me in the past. You feel me? But you heal, you grow, and you mature from all those things. And, you know, you hold no bitterness in your heart and you reconcile with people and you just stand for holiness. You stand for the truth and you love thy neighbor as you love thyself. My prayer is Psalms 91 over his family, over every pastor, over all of us in Jesus' name in this wicked and fallen world. I don't know what the motive was when the person came to this house. I don't know if it was politics. I don't know if it was online, you know, you know, because of the things that he has exposed and addressed with certain, you know, prophets, false prophets, you know. I don't know. All right, but at the end of the day, that stuff doesn't matter because it didn't change the event. And all we can do is pray.